Praise the Lord. We just glorify God today. Amen. I want to welcome each and every one of you that are here today. Those of you that are listening to this broadcast and those of you that are viewing this broadcast. We are Abundant Grace Church. And I'm Bishop Ramon Di Maria, the pastor of Abundant Grace Church. Today is Sunday, April the 22nd in the year 2012. And the title of our message today is The Fruit of the Heart. I'll be coming from Luke chapter 6 and verse 45, which reads as follows. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaketh. That's from the King James Version. Now the writer of this gospel is Luke the beloved physician. Another name from his Dr. Lou. He was a Gentile physician and a missionary companion of the Apostle Paul. He wrote this gospel about AD 58, between AD 58 and 60, from Palestine. And the theme of his gospel is Jesus is the long awaited Messiah, the Savior of all mankind, whether Jew, or Gentile. That's what we must never forget. Whether Jew or Gentile, he is the Messiah of both. Okay? Yeah. So, a few comments are Luke is the only gospel to share Jesus' stories or parables, we call them, of the good Samaritan, the prodigal son, and the rich man and Lazarus. So we have to understand that there are some things that Luke included that weren't in some of the other Gospels, okay? So, an important fact is that it doesn't matter who you are, where you are from, or what you have done. Jesus came to seek and to save you. Mm -hmm. He saved all of us. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, there are, several, well, all of us here today are from somewhere else. We're not from here. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. And we have various nationalities here. Right. We are descendants. Right. We are, our cultures are, are different. So know that God loves each and every one of us. And he sent Christ to die for each and every one of us. Amen? Amen. Yeah. So Luke's gospel account is addressed to a man named Theophilus. You can see that in chapter 1 and verse 3 to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, that is, among the Christian community, about Jesus Christ. Now, one thing, it's unclear who Theophilus actually was. Okay, we don't know. Though some believe he may have been a Roman official, we don't know. But we know that he did exist because he is named in the Gospel of Luke and in the Book of Acts. Okay, now... As with all the Gospels, Luke shows Jesus' resurrection, adding detailed accounts of his appearances to the two believers on the road to Emmaus, and the remaining 11 disciples. And why do we say the remaining 11 disciples? Because we know that Judas betrayed Christ, and he hung himself. So there were only 11 left. And then sometime within a certain time period, they elected another one to be the, uh, the 12th, to fill in. So we understand that his name was Matthias. So he took over, okay? So, and he also wrote, Luke that is, the book of Acts as a follow-up to... Uh, the book of Luke, or the Gospel of Luke. Now, understand that the book of Acts ends abruptly at the end with just Paul ministering in his own rented house. And we believe that the reason for that is that, of course, the book of Acts never ends because our work will never end until Jesus comes back. Amen. And we believe that something happened to Luke and he would have continued writing in the book of Acts, but he was prevented from doing so. 
by the Holy Spirit. Now, whether he died, he gave his life, or whatever happened, we don't know. But we believe that uh, he just left it undone. But, so there's two areas of thought on the uh, book of Acts, okay? Mm -hmm. And the book of Acts, which is written by Luke, deals with the birth of the church. Of course, Jesus' resurrection. And the work of the Holy Spirit through every Christian believer, okay? So, some important scriptures that you may want to write down uh, so you can read it later on. It's Luke 12 and 34, which says, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Mm -hmm. Luke 15 and 7 says, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over 99 just persons which need repentance. I mean, which need no repentance, actually. Luke 17 and 33 says, Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. Luke 18 and 17 says, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. Which means putting all your faith and your trust in God. And, and as a little child, we put our total faith and trust in God. Like we know that our, our, our parents are going to meet our need. Our parents are going to wash our clothes. We'll have a house, over, a roof over our head, a house to live in, things like that. We have to depend on God to meet our each and every need. Because Amen. he is truly our father. Yeah. Okay? Amen. So let's, let's understand you, that. Lord. Amen. Luke 19 and 10 says, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. So there are just a few uh, verses that uh, you may want to look over and meditate on, okay? It is to be noted that skill in disapproving or rebuking of what others do does not make a good man, but rather he that proves his righteousness both in word and deed. So we, we, we can go to other people and tell them what they're doing wrong, but we must have our own lives correct. So the man that is righteous and does right both in word and deed is a true witness, not just someone that tells people what to do, what they're doing right or wrong, but one that, that represents our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. Of course, also in spirit and in truth. And he, the person lives by the Word of God and is obedient to the Word of God. So, in our, our verse, my beloved, we see that uh, there are different things that can take away from a man's witness. And that is what he speaks because we are we are to speak from our heart a lot of times we speak from our mind and when we speak from our mind understand that that we have problems because we don't really how can i put it uh think before we talk mm -hmm. but when we examine ourselves see we don't examine our mind we examine our heart because out of the heart, we speak. Right. Now, if the heart isn't right, our mind isn't right. So therefore, we don't do what is right. We don't speak what is right. But when our heart is right, when, our, when the Spirit lives within us, we have the ability to speak that which is right, which is loving, which is caring, which is righteous, which is faithful, which is true. Okay? So, as we start... Our message uh, today, I'm going to start with Luke chapter 6, verse 43, okay, which is two verses up. It says, For a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit, neither does a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. So, that's from the King James Version. Now, I'm going to read the... Uh, English version. I like to read a couple verses because, like, the word, some people don't 
fully comprehend the uh, King James, the old English version. So we're going to do it in the uh, contemporary English version, okay? It says, a good tree cannot produce bad fruit. And a bad tree cannot produce good fruit. Now, you can't put it any more simple than that, right? Mm -hmm. It's just like you don't get oranges off of apple trees and pears off of peach trees. <laughs> it doesn't happen, right? Some people try to crossbreed all these things, you know, but you're either in or you're out. You either are or you are not, okay, period. So it's to be noted that skill in disapproving or rebuking, I'll say that again, of what others do does not make a good person. So always remember that. We, have, we are told by Christ that we are the light of the world. Right. So we are to produce good fruit. But we have to be cultivated correctly on the inside. <laughs> mm -hmm. it, have you noticed that, like especially this time of the year, when the, when the like, we had an early season, early spring, and we, had, we saw all the wildflowers, everything wild, weeds and everything coming up early. If you just let them grow wild, what happens? They take, they take over. Mm -hmm. So you have to mow it, cut it down, keep it cut down. Then you have to fertilize. Then you got you to treat the soil. And this is the way it is. We are born with the sinful nature. And unless the change takes place, we will be sinful. Mm -hmm. And that, and the what takes place is to be, you know, born again. Amen. Put it, you know, come out of sin and enter into the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. So we have to understand that there has to be a change take place in our life, or we're born bad and we die bad. To be born bad and to die <coughs> bad means to be in hell. Period. But when a change takes place, the new birth takes place. We are changed. Now, how does that new birth take place? Well, by hearing the Word of God. Amen. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. You're either going to have faith in the world or you're going to have faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Either one. To have faith in the world means to go to hell. To have faith in Christ means to have eternal life in heaven. Now, we are born to live for eternity. Our souls are eternal. They don't die. Our soul goes to be with who we serve. If you serve darkness, your soul goes to hell. If you serve light, your soul goes to heaven. So we have to understand that in life, there is one great choice to make. It's not whether you're going to be an architect, an engineer, whether you're going to go to college, what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear, all these things are immaterial. The one main choice in life is to whether you will go to heaven or whether you will go to hell. Amen. Whether you receive Christ or you will dwell in the, in the kingdom of darkness for eternity. Amen. You either choose the devil or you choose Christ. Either one. Exactly. And that's the only choice. There's no middle of the road. Amen. There's no purgatory place or anything else. There's heaven or hell. Mm -hmm. Torment or bliss. Period. And what's in your heart is going to determine where you will spend eternity. If Christ isn't in your heart, your eternity is in hell. If Christ is in your heart, your eternity is in heaven, is in paradise, is in bliss, is in holiness, and worship, and praise, and sanctification. Amen. 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 So that's what we have to understand. But yes. what says, choose you this day who you would serve. God or mammon. It's either God or the world. The things of the world. Things of the world of the world are hell and you are governed, you are judged by your words to say no means hell to say yes means heaven Amen. period and in order to have a change of heart you must be born again mm -hmm. born again mm -hmm. of the spirit of God born again always relates to salvation when you're not born again, it always relates to damnation. Some people don't like to hear words like that or use words like that. They don't want to hear about hell. 
Or, I mean, that's not modern. That's not politically correct. Or damnation. They don't want to hear about that. But these are the words of Christ himself. Yes. Right. We speak nice words of Christ like, I die for you. Oh, God is love. But we also need to tell them that this is the result of rejecting that love of God Amen. through Jesus Christ. Yes. And that is eternal separation from God. Which is eternal torment. You know, people in the world use the word hell every day. In the, in the world, they tell people to go to hell. The rock bands and heavy metal, they, are, they all sang about hell. But they sang how good hell is. <laughs> and how, what, what a big party is going to be in hell. Mm -hmm. That's what they say. Oh, hell is a great place. We're all going to be there. No, we're not all going to be there. <laughs> you will be there with Satan and his demons being tormented. Tormented day and night. Because I'm not going to go there, but in the book of Revelation, the final chapters of the book of Revelation, it says that Satan, false prophet and the Antichrist, are thrown, I mean, they'll be in a lake of fire where they will be tormented. Day and night. Does that sound like a happy place? No. The lake of fire? No. It's not a happy place. The Bible speaks about the grave. It speaks about Sheol, Hades, <coughs> Gehenna. It speaks about all these places, which means death and separation. But Jesus spoke about heaven. He spoke about paradise. He spoke about heaven, about bliss and praise. Look at the, from the fourth chapter of the book of Revelation on, they're praising, I mean, they're praising God. That's what we need to understand. Would you write, do you want to praise and bliss or do you want to suffer in pain? Everyone has to make that choice. Now, of course, when we have a brand new, a new baby, if the baby dies, a birth or something, you know, we know that they're not, they, they have never sinned. They're sinless. Amen. But they have to make a choice. When, if they were to live, they'd have to make a choice one day as to who they want to serve. Okay? So, as we continue on, we know that every tree bears after its kind. As is the tree, so is the fruit. The same principle holds good in a moral world. A good man will show forth good deeds, while well, a bad man will bear fruit according to his nature. Period. It's like I said before, you know, a soup doesn't make a man. That's right. You have corrupt people wearing suits and ties every day in businesses and corporations in banishment, and they're sinners, and they're rotten to the core. Then you have people that dress like me <laughs> on Sunday that preach. <laughs> it's not the clothes that maybe it's the fruit that is produced. The fruit is the spirit that is in me and every other born again believer. You cannot judge a book by its cover. Like I read some, I buy a lot of. And CDs for the radio and things, and I have teaching books, and some of them, the cover looks good, but the music isn't good. Or, or you, you look at the book, hey, it looks real nice, but you open up and it says nothing. Mm -hmm. Especially the book that says how to understand your wife, and you open up and there's nothing in it. Empty pages. <laughs> you, you can't understand your wife, can't understand a woman, right? <laughs> it's just the way it goes. But there's nothing written inside. <laughs> oh, it says copyright date. I don't, even, I don't even know why it says copyright date. Probably for the cover. But there's nothing in there to be copyrighted. It's all blank. Right? Yeah. So we have to understand that what we bear, the fruit that we bear, shows who we are in Christ. Galatians 5.17 says, The Spirit and your desires are enemies of each other. They are always fighting each other and keeping you from doing 
what you feel you should. The spirit and your sinful desires, they fight. It's a constant battle every day. It's like light and dark every day. It's a constant battle. And that battle will only end at your death. Well, should, you, should the rapture take, take, take place. But you will fight that, that you will fight the flesh every day of the week, every hour, every minute, something is going to happen. Satan is going to try to cause you to sin. But you know, he can't unless you want to. But it's kind of hard to turn around. It's kind of hard not to express your feelings when, you, when someone come, comes against you, right? You have a boss, a supervisor, or a uh, co-worker. It's kind of hard not to let them have full force. <laughs> we know that. Or so let somebody cut in front of you with a car. It's hard. Here I am. Here you go. Number one. To, uh, <laughs> to tell them, hey, call them a crazy driver or whatever. Then you look and it's a, it's a little old lady driving. <laughs> um, then you feel bad, right? Spirit <laughs> convicts you. I've seen someone drive pretty bad, though, at high speed. I had one whip around me yesterday like I was standing still. No, it wasn't you, Mary. <laughs> it wasn't you. <laughs> but I, and I've had young kids on motorcycles pass me, like going fast like this morning. And all I can do is pray for them, pray for their safety. Now, don't wish any harm on anybody, but pray that God deliver them and set them free. Amen. Okay? So... 1 John 3 and 10 says, that's the first uh, letter of John, chapter 3, verse 10 says, you can tell God's children from the devil's children because those who belong to the devil refuse to do right and to love each other. So as we can see from this verse, the heart of man is the tree and the words and actions are fruit according to the nature of the tree. If somebody is rotten inside, they're not going to say anything nice. Well, I mean, they're not going to speak truth. They can't. Remember, Satan sends people to you. Sends things to you. No. Have you seen these advertisements? A must-have. Like this email. A must-have. You know, some, guy, some kind of a tablet or something, or, or the newest phone for four or $500. You must have it. And crazy people go out and buy it. Mm -hmm. Then, in, in a little while long, if you want to trade in, they say, well, we'll give you 30, 40 bucks for it. <laughs> True. <laughs> Must have. <laughs> this is why so many people are in debt. I mean, not just in this country. People judge this country falsely. But let me tell you something. When we go in the mission field sometimes, everybody's got a phone. A little baby is born, she has a cell phone, in case somebody wants to kidnap her or something. A little baby has a cell phone. You know, six months old. Wait, they have cell phones. Can you believe it? No. I know one people that, some people are asking me for a donation. Could we have a donation for our ministry? And everybody's got a cell phone. So, hey, I just cash in some of them cell phones. Because why does a little kid, two years old, need a cell phone? And they're texting and everything like, Hey, they're in church, texting, they're in church, talking. What in the world? I mean, their God is materialistic things. If their God was God, the God that we serve, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Father of Christ, who Christ is God, then they would get their priorities right. There are a lot of problems, even in ministry, because People think that they have to have certain things to reach people. I have to have a $120 a month phone service to reach people. No, you don't. Well, I have to have this certain phone to reach people. No, you don't. What's this? What's that? <laughs> it's a tongue. <laughs> you speak to people. Eyes to look at people. A mouth to pray for people. We have all the tools. Our body is a vessel for the Holy Spirit to dwell in, to use. All we really need is ourselves. 
God gave us everything we need. A mind, a soul, mm -hmm. a heart, a mouth, ears. He gave us everything we need. We don't need all this high-tech stuff to tell somebody about Jesus Christ. Amen. We don't. Amen, that's right. So let's get our priorities right. Instead of buying a $500 cell phone, the new iPhones, why don't we buy some Bibles? Why don't we buy some food to feed the hungry? Why don't we buy some tracks? Why don't we invest in God's kingdom instead of the world, instead of making the world rich? Let's increase the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Good word. Good so Luke 6 and 44 says, you can tell when a tree is light by the fruit it produces. You cannot pick figs or grapes from thorn brushes. What you see is the way it is. You want bananas? You don't plant a peach tree. You want roses? You don't plant daffodils. If you want watermelon, you don't plant cantaloupe. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, that's just the way it is. The thing is, is what you sow to, that's what you become. That's what you reap. Amen. So sowing and the law of sowing and reaping never changes. If you have a hunger for souls, you hunger for righteousness, for the Lord's sake, you will be righteous. That's what you seek after. What do you want God to do in your life? What do you feel God is calling you to do? You must prepare for that. If it's for ministry, go into the area of ministry. Amen. Learn, Amen. teach. If it's to be a prayer warrior, learn how to pray. Amen. And you know how you learn how to pray? By yielding to the Holy Spirit. Read Romans chapter 8. But we don't know what to pray for, but the Spirit makes intercession for us. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Jude tells you the same thing. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Because you don't know what to pray for because your mind is so mixed up, so full of things, so full of ideas, good and bad. You can't read a book on how to pray. You have to be led, for, to, led by the Holy Spirit to learn how to pray. Mm -hmm. There's no how to. You need to learn from God. Ask Him. Get in prayer. Ask Him. What, teach me to pray. The simple prayer Jesus said when the apostles asked him, or his followers, disciples too, teach us to pray. And he said, pray, our Father. Go right to God. Do, do you need a book? Here's the book right here. Pray. The Lord's Prayer. Pray. Follow that. as a guide. It's, it's a guide. Follow it. How to pray. Ask the Spirit to reveal it to you. You don't need some high-tech book, $500 book to learn how to pray. Get on your hands and knees and say, Lord, leave me. Spirit, take over for me. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray according to the will of God, according to the Holy Ghost, according Amen. to Scripture, according to the promises Amen. of God. It's true. Pray. Lord, you said that. Boom. You said this, Lord. You said this, Lord. And pray according to them. Now, hold God to his promise. Hold God to it. Amen. Hold God to his word. He honors his word. See, when you came to Christ, you have a covenant with God. Yes, he did. And he's going to fulfill his covenant. So we have to understand that we must know what the word of God says. So we have to open up the word of God. Because yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. you can't believe everything you hear from preachers. You can't believe it, everything. You must. That's why I like your people taking notes. You can check me out. Check out what I'm saying. Make sure it's the truth. If you, don't, if you don't understand, then you ask me. But seek the word of God. For in it are the words of eternal life. If it's you or somebody else. This is the guide. This is the guide that is going to take you through this life. And get you to heaven. It is a guide to help you to reach the lost. It's a guide to help you to live. Amen. It's a guide for everything you need. Faith, 
trust, love, to bear the fruit of the Spirit, especially love, to have joy, and to have peace. You always need love, joy, and peace in your life. Yeah. Always. Always. Yeah, you need the love of God. The love of God brings joy. The love of God brings peace. Joy brings peace. Love brings peace. You need, you need the first three in your life every day. You need to manifest all three of them every day. If you don't, you'll be lacking somewhere in all the things that you do every day. You read the Word of God because you love God. Because God is in you. The Spirit is in you. Jesus Christ is in you. That's why you need to follow the Word of God. You need to demonstrate the, the Word of God to everybody. Love, joy, peace. But Paul says the greatest of these is love. Because if you don't have love, and you can't share love, how can you say that the love of God abides in you? You can't. How can you say you love God and you can't love your fellow man? Especially those that are in the body of Christ. How can you say that, that you do? That you love God if you can't love? How can you say you love God who you can't see when you can't love those that you can't see? It's impossible. So, if a man is really a good man, if he possesses a principle of grace in his heart and a prevailing soul be towards God and heaven, though perhaps he may not abound in fruit, though some of his fruits be blasted, and though he may be sometimes like a tree in winter, Yet, he, he does not bring forth corrupt fruit. He is still truly a man of God. See, the one thing we have to understand. A man isn't born again because we think he's a good man. Every one of us. And every one of us that have been in the ministry for a long time, or Christian for a long time, myself, Gloria, Mary Ruth, we know that we have dry seasons. Amen. Do we not? Amen. We have a dry season where sometimes we pray and we just can't feel the Spirit. Amen. That doesn't mean that He's not there. Sometimes we go through them times. Yeah. It's like it's a, a tree in winter. A tree in winter doesn't bloom, but it doesn't mean that it's not alive. <laughs> because come spring, it starts to blossom. Look, once a year, here in Texas, we see blue bonnets. Now, you're not seeing them anymore. <clears throat> you won't see them until next year. It's like, you know, Easter is at the door when you see the blue bonnets. Right. The, they, they might be a little dormant, but they're not dead. Okay? It's the same thing. A tree gains strength in the wintertime. Because it's not bearing the fruit. It's taking all the minerals. Otherwise, it's staying there. It's staying there, getting stronger. And then it starts to bloom in its time. And we have to understand that just because somebody isn't doing something, isn't active 365 days a year, that doesn't mean that there's something wrong in their walk with God. What about people that are called to be intercessors and prayer warriors that they pray in their home all the time? God didn't call them to go out, but they pray at home. Mm -hmm. How many times did Jesus send the 12 out? Think. Read the Gospels? Once. How many times did he send the 70 out? Once. <laughs> then, if we go to Acts, chapter 1, which I just wrote a message on, by the way, then he commands everybody that was there, 120, to go. Matthew, 28, tells them to go. Luke, 16, it tells them to go. But during the ministry, what were they doing? Learning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Learning. Then when they all went out and said, hey, the devil's a bass, this is bad, he says, that's not important. Only important thing is, is that your names are written in heaven. 
See, we have to understand, everybody's ministry isn't the same. You may be a minister on your job. You may be a minister in a marketplace. Wherever God calls you to go and what he calls you to do, that's what you do. Everybody isn't called to go to the mission fields. But one thing, we are all called to be a witness. We are called to pray. We are called to watch. He said, watch and pray. That's what we're called to do. Watch and pray. And witness. So that's what God wants to do. And he wants us to do it in love. And the hardest thing to do is pray. That and love. Because we have to love those that don't love us. Ones that aren't lovable. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which is kind of hard to do. Mm -hmm. See, we can all say, I love you when we come in church. Oh, I love you when we come in church. But how about out, outside? So, like I told the story about in the grocery store. Somebody runs over with a car, bangs right in you. Or grabs the last one that you were going to get. You know, and things like that. Hmm. Can you love that person? Can you forgive that person? It's kind of hard. But remember, the state that we were in when we were saved. Were we lovable? Did we do anything for God? Yeah. We didn't do anything. We were, what's the word? Uh, disgusting <laughs> to God. <laughs> but he loved yeah. us. That didn't change his love for us. Because while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. Mm -hmm. We cursed him. We neglected him. Because, you know, if, if Christ comes to us and we don't accept him, that means we reject him. Right. To go and is to put our affections on the things of this world and not God is rejection of who he is and what he stands for, which is goodness, mercy, love. And ignoring his power. Amen. But he changed us. He filled us with his Holy Spirit. He gave us new life. We are born again. We are reborn in Christ Jesus. So we need to bear fruit for him. But not to judge others that aren't in the same area of Christianity. The same area of ministry as we are. Not everybody's called to be a pastor, evangelist. A teacher. No, no. Some people are just called to pray, intercede, show love, give. Everybody has a different ministry. There are many ministries, but we operate in different ones. Mm -hmm. You know, Judas' ministry was taking care of the money for the ministry. And even though he was stealing money, they never came up short. <laughs> Because when they lacked money, Jesus turned to loaves and the fishes. He multiplied them, didn't he? Yes, he, he didn't did. eat any money. No. <laughs> and everybody ate and was filled. See, we have to understand that God is able to meet our need. Yes. To meet the need of everyone, no matter what the need is. And there's none of us here have the same need. That's right. We have different needs, each and every one of us. The needs of a woman are different than a man. The needs of a child are different than a grown up. A grown up, different from a child. Different jobs have different needs. Different ministries have different needs. But the main thing is that the whole world needs Christ. And that will never change. Okay? So, James 3 and 12 says, Can a fig tree produce olives? Or a grapevine produce figs? No. Does fresh water come out of a well full of salt water? No. You need a converter to change that around, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and ships have them. Mm -hmm. But you know something? They have to be changed every so many years because why? They rot out and everything. But like the woman at the well, which is another message that I wrote, the water that Jesus gives, the person shall never thirst again. What God gives us is a hunger for him and not for the things of the world. That's what Jesus was saying. Look, 
You can drink water out of this well and always be thirsty for all the junk in the world. But once you receive me, the water of life, you'll never want them things again. Now, the enemy will come back and say, you still need them, but you just say, no, I have all that I need. Okay? Jude 1 and 12 says, these people are filthy-minded, and by their shameful and selfish actions, they spoil the meals you eat together. You are like clouds blown along by the wind, but never bringing any rain. They are like leafless trees, uprooted and dead, and unable to produce fruit. It's like a fruitless mulberry, a fruitless peace tree. They look good, but they don't do anything. <laughs> but people take fruitless mulberries, like, why? Because they grow fast, and there's no fruit to pick up. But all they do is they just look good. And a matter of fact, you know, a fruitless mulberry it might grow fast and grow up high, but it doesn't live long. Fruitless mulberry has a short lifespan. So, understand that. You may look good, but you're dying on the inside, especially spiritually. And let me tell you something. If Christ is in you, and you don't do something for him, you're going to be dying, and you walk with God. Which means you won't be producing any fruit. Okay? So now we go to our main text. Luke 6 and 45. I'll read it from the uh, contemporary English version because I already read it from the King James. It says, Good people do good things because of their, what is good in their hearts. Bad people do bad things because of evil in their hearts. Your words show what is in your heart. Now, we need to take that scripture to heart. Amen. <laughs> okay? We need to, I need to take that Amen. to heart. Amen? Sure. All of us do. Let me read that last part. Your words show what is in your heart. <laughs> hey, yeah. guard your words. <laughs> yeah. If you're something wrong with your heart, you ask God to remove it. Or just don't say anything. That way at least you can fool somebody for a while. But you really need to correct the problem yeah. that's in your heart, really. So, the words of a person have great meaning. They have either a negative or a positive impact on someone. That's it. It's either negative or positive. It's either gain or loss. Right or wrong. Light or dark. Heaven or hell. <laughs> It's not heaven and hell. It's heaven or hell. And your words have a definite effect on the positive and the negative. Period. Yes, Jesus, I want you. Heaven. No, Jesus, I don't want you. I don't need religion. That's a famous phrase. I don't need religion. Well, then that means that you are going to hell. Period. Either one. It's yay or nay. Yes, I vote for Jesus, or no, I reject Jesus. Either one. Mm -hmm. Which one do you want? Choose you this day who you're going to serve. God or the world. God or the riches of this world, which are temporary. A great person just, just died this week. We won't mention names. The next day it said what he was worth. Was worth. He left everything behind for somebody else. You're not taking anything with you. Listen, you, all you that are striving for riches, you won't leave this world with your riches. They stay behind for somebody else to enjoy. Amen. Amen. I want to leave behind a legacy. Yes. A testimony. Amen. Okay. Amen. So don't amass wealth. I'll leave behind a legacy of souls, ministry. We had another famous person of God die, I think it was yesterday. Now I want to mention his name, Chuck Colson. Oh, I did He lived a reprobate life at first for the Nixon administration. 
-hmm. and he got caught. He got for about three years or five years. He only served seven months. But in that time, somebody gave him a book about Christ, and he got saved. He had one of the greatest prisons. Yeah, he had. <laughs> now he's gone, but somebody else is carrying on. But he got behind a great prison ministry. It's like 600 prisons I've mentioned, all over the world. He got a great legacy behind. So, Understand that our labor has gotten vain in the Lord. Amen. What you do for God lasts forever. Okay? Keep that in mind. So praise God for the work of Chuck Colson and the work that he left behind, like angel tree, you know, for the children of prisoners, you know, who are, it wasn't their fault, that he left a legacy and work behind. So praise God for him and his work. And we know that he met his Savior, of whom he was a servant, of the Lord Jesus Christ. So let me talk about a couple negatives and positives, and then we're going to close. Okay? Negatives. You can wound people to the core, break down a person's spirit, stripping them of the courage for living because... They speak to people rashly like the thrust of a sword. Harsh words destroy relationships. Emotional and possible, even physical death can result from harsh words. You can kill a person by harsh words or like. In a ministry, you can kill their spirit. Okay? That doesn't mean that they're lost you now. But you can kill their desire to produce fruit for the kingdom of God. How about somebody that keeps on telling somebody? Let's look from a worldly perspective. You never amount to anything. You're no good. Your father was no good. He was a drunk. He was this. Or your mother was this. Or your mother was that. And your mother was that. Or this or that. You kill <coughs> their desire to do better. Sure. But let's talk about positives. Your words can spark or in, insert life into a relationship because... A soothing tongue is like a tree of life. Yeah. The right words spoken at the right time can help heal wounded relationships because they can be healing to the bones and sweet to a hurting soul. Amen. So use words that give life and comfort. That encourage people to continue to go on. Amen. If a drunk takes a drink, encourage him that, hey, you, you can make it. Somebody that had a drug fix or something, tell them, you're going to make it. You can do it. Just try. Do your best. You can do it. See, I mean, we have to encourage people. Okay? And not put them down. Tell them they're not worth anything. They'll never amount to anything. They're just going to die in some ditch. That's not what they need to hear. Amen. They need to hear that there is hope. Amen. And they can do it. Amen. And Jesus will be with them. Amen. Okay? So... What we need is, I'm going to give you a few facts. Good communication. Honesty. Things that are positive. To speak to others. Remember, garbage in, garbage out. You want to speak positive things? You need good things to go in you. Okay? What we should not communicate to others? Untruth. We need to speak the truth. But we speak the truth in love and with compassion. Okay? How should we communicate? It's easy. Communicate with gentleness and love. Remember, uh, Proverbs 15 and 1 says, A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. The response of the hearer is conditioned by your words. Mm -hmm. You speak good? Yeah, it, it'll be Proverbs 15 and 1. So you read that, okay? Speak softly. Just say, speak softly and carry a big stick. <laughs> you speak softly and you carry the word of God, which is power. Okay? Amen. What we should communicate... 
first of all, before you communicate anything, check yourself. <laughs> okay? Check your timing. Because if something happens instantly, and you speak instantly, you might say the wrong thing. You're usually going to say it in retaliation, okay? So, understand that Proverbs 15 and 23 says, It is wonderful to say the right thing at the right time. Amen. So, if you are not certain about your timing, wait and pray for God's wisdom before you speak. Okay? Now, Matthew 12 and 34 says, O generation of vipers, how can we, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Mm -hmm. And the next verse, 35, Matthew 12 and 35 says, A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, bringeth forth good things. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure, bringeth forth good evil things. So in closing, let me say this. The heart is the treasure and the words and actions are the expenses or produce or fruit from that treasure. So what treasure is in your heart? The treasure of eternal life is in your heart. You need to speak words of life into somebody else's life. See, beloved, when we speak to others, we are to speak words that edify and bring soothing thoughts to them. Harsh words only cause people to retaliate or turn off to us. Let us as Christians bear the fruit of Christ in our heart so that others will see the image of Christ living within us. So the thing is, how do you approach or speak to others? Examine yourself truthfully according to the Word of God and, this, and the things written in this message. Ask God to show you your shortcomings, and He will. Amen. You have to ask God to show you. Your, it's like self-examination. You judge yourself according to the Word of God. When I wrote this message, I had to judge myself according to what I was writing. Mm -hmm. Or I can't present the message <laughs> in truth. Did I line up with everything here in a positive manner? Amen. Did I? Yes, sir. Amen. Most areas. But, you know, nobody's perfect, not even the preacher. But after I wrote it, I was a better person. <laughs> That's the thing. Okay? Because the message speaks to the preacher first. Remember that. Mm -hmm. It speaks to the depth of his so on. Amen? Amen. So we just praise the Lord for today. Amen? Amen. For the message titled, The Fruit of the Heart from Luke chapter 6 and verse 45. Well, let me say this. If you have never accepted Christ as your Savior and Lord, today is your day. If you have never bared good fruit for God, today you can. Amen. I want to pray. And if you have not accepted Christ as your Savior and Lord, I want you to say the prayer with me to receive Christ as your Savior and Lord. Won't you pray this prayer with me and receive eternal life? Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I come before you a sinner. I heard the message today, and my heart is not right. I have never accepted your plan of salvation. And I'm convicted today. I am sorry for my sins and for hurting other people, but mostly for hurting you, Father God. I accept your gift of eternal life, which only comes through Jesus Christ and his sacrifice at Calvary. And I know that he died for my sins he was buried, yet risen from the dead, and ascended in heaven. This gal at your right hand, interceding. And I accept your gift of eternal life. I believe in my heart who Jesus is, and I confess it with my mouth that he is Lord. 
Forgive me, wash me, and cleanse me. Do a new work in me, and use me for your kingdom work. And I pray these things, and I thank you. If I believe today I receive salvation, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. If you said that prayer, please contact me at Abundant Grace Church at att.net. I am Bishop Ramon Di Maria, and I'm the pastor of Abundant Grace Church. Today is uh, Sunday, April 4th, I mean April 22nd, excuse me, in the year 2012. And our message was the fruit of the heart from Luke 6 and 45. You can also listen to this on Power Radio. You can watch it on uh, Ustream.tv, on YouTube.com, and uh, pretty soon you'll be able to watch it on uh, GodTube. Dot com. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being with us today and have a great day in the Lord. And let me say this, that if you receive Christ as your Savior and Lord, welcome to the kingdom of God. You truly become my brother or sister. And we thank God for you. And find a Bible preaching teaching church. Go down for the altar call. Tell them what you did. Ask them to anoint you with oil and to pray for you and to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless you and go with God.